So this is the meeting of the Northampton Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, and um, I'm David Bloomberg. And joining me uh, as board members today are Elizabeth Silver and um, do we still have Maureen on the on the call? Okay. Yes. Um, and then Nathan Chung is here from the City of Northampton Office of Sus uh, Planning and Sustainability, uh, providing staff support to our board. Um, this hearing is being recorded, as you heard, and um, notice of this hearing was published on October 26 and November 2nd, 2023. Before we hear the application for the special permit for 122 Main Street, uh, we do provide an opportunity for public comment uh, from members of the public who want to address the board about matters that are not on tonight's agenda. But I believe we have confirmed that there are no other members of the public present, correct, Nathan? That is correct. No one else is on the, on the hearing. So seeing no other members of the public present, um, we'll move on to the matter that is on the agenda for tonight. Um, um, I should disclose, uh, it's not a conflict issue, but I am a big fan of Pinocchio pizza. <laughs> I will yeah. recognize Erica. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, but, but if, but if <laughs> I don't think any members available, if, if, uh, that were a reason uh, to recuse. Uh, I, I don't have any financial interest or expectation of financial interest, so I don't think it's an actual conflict. Um, the, uh, the application is for a special permit by Erica Saravia to install awning signs where the total area of all the front surface signs exceed 10% of the ground floor facade area at 122 Main Street, map ID 32C-009. Uh, for this special permit, a supermajority, meaning a unanimous vote of all three members tonight, is required to approve the application for the special permit. It's discretionary, and as part of such any such approval, the board must find that, quote, the architecture of the building, the location of the building, or the land or nature of the use being made of the building or land is such that additional signs or signs of a larger size would not detract from the character of the neighborhood and should be permitted in the public interest. Applicable code sections as 350-72M. Um, so with that, we always give the applicant the first, the opportunity to present a brief description of the request that you're making. Uh, and if anyone who addresses the board, uh, well, in this case, the applicant could just give your name and address first for the record that's being kept. And then if you could just tell us briefly, we do have your application, but if you could just tell us briefly what you know, why we're here, what you're requesting, please, Erica. Okay. My name is Erica Saravia. My location address is 122 Main Street, Northampton, Massachusetts, 01060. And we are here because we have a uh, sign already, but it's too big. We want to make it uh, smaller than the side that we have. Okay. You want to make it smaller or you'd like us to grant approval so you could keep the sign? Yeah. No, because there's already, there's one already, but they want to make it a little bit smaller than the one that is installed already. Oh, okay. Well, okay. I think, David, you could clarify that it might not be necessary depending on, you know, what we oh, discussed what? tonight, right? Right. Um I think perhaps Nathan could offer us some clarification on where we stand, like what is too large? Is there already an existing sign that's too large? Yes, um, got to look at the dimensions again. So the existing sign is well in excess of the 10% uh, of the ground floor facade. The applicant and the applicant sign maker, um, GAG Signs, they presented a new design. Uh, it's um, quite different. I, I believe you saw it on the staff report. And if the board wishes, I can share a screenshot um, if that's the board wish. Uh, so it is a different sign. And this one is within the 10% of the ground floor facade. What makes this to require a special permit is that um, 
So the interesting thing about the sign ordinance for the business district is that the combined total of all signs on the building needs to be within 10% of the ground floor facade. There is an existing sign on the second floor <laughs> for salon, you know, that's well in excess of the 10% of the ground floor facade. So no matter what size the applicant presents today, uh, even if it's within the 10% of the ground floor facade, the total is going to be well over um, the 10% uh, maximum of the ground floor facade. Right. And so the issue, well, what's before us today then is a request to approve the new sign. And if, and the new sign is actually below the 10%, but the problem is there's the pre-existing sign up on the second floor for the salon, which is the big metal sign. And yeah. the metal sign combined with the new sign, even though the new sign's under 10%, still requires a special permit from us, a determination of that. Okay. As I understand it, Nathan, um, there are other storefronts in the same location that that do exceed based on the upper and lower, and that um, with the distance between the two signs, that there that the um, that there's no problem staff problem with the request is that is that accurate that's with the, my with that's, the new yes that's the recommendation um if you're looking at the pinocchio pizza directly on the um, on the left side there are three buildings and adjacent buildings and two of them at least have um you know two signs on the first and second floors and um I did only a visual estimation, but their dimensions are also seen well above the 10% of the ground floor facade. So considering the context, um, the uh, applicant's proposed sign would not be much different in size from the existing um, signs on the two other buildings. Right. So I have one question and one observation. The question is, uh, and it could be that I just didn't read everything carefully enough, but about the awning, the side signage on the awning, like how does that factor in? And the other, the observation is that the second floor sign is actually above the second floor. It's like where a third floor will be. So it's well above, you know, it's almost like a third floor where it's placed so it it clears that kind of frontage uh, quite a bit which i think is a you know plus in terms of not oversaturating that storefront with signage right i think that i agree and i think that probably goes more than in my mind to uh the decision that we need to make taking all of that into account as to whether this um is um you know uh looking for the exact language but adversely affects the character of the uh um yeah would not detract from the character of the neighborhood taking into account the fact that the new sign would otherwise be a, you know a, 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 a correct size and to your point maureen the old sign is way up at the top. You don't. I agree. I mean, I, I went. I went in front of the building today and looked at that whole row of buildings, and I personally don't think that, um, um, especially with the new smaller sign, it would detract from the character of the neighborhood. Um, I am curious. I have a question for the applicant. Um, yeah. Is the sign? Is the company that made the sign for you? So they're the ones who made the awning that's up now and didn't realize that was too big no that was uh, another company that they did but we were trying to call to fix it and they never answered the phone call so we find a new company the one that is making the new design right now hmm. wow it's really unfortunate because that means you you need to pay for a new sign i thought maybe if it's the same company they would they would give you a break on that. Apparently. And back to my question about the side signs on the awning. Well, there's side signs on the existing awning. Are there side signs on the new awning? No. Yeah, so there won't be any side signs on the new. No, they won't. Just on the front. 
the, okay. the new one that we're being asked to approve. And yeah, I communicated with the applicant and the sign maker about that because their submitted design only had that front design you have seen that says Pinocchio Pizza, and they have verbally um, clarified that they are not planning on any side signs. And I, I believe the applicant just um, stated that again. And I have explained them the option, a buy right option for awnings. You can have um, four inch tall signs on the bottom edge of the awning. Either both sides, uh, both the uh, both sides of the awning bottoms can have four inch tall signs, or the front awning can have it, which which will be visually awkward. So um, they still have the buy right option of adding some um, four inch tall side signs on the sides of the awning but they did not propose any um, additional larger um, awning signs in their new design. Okay. So if um, we wanted to be generous in our decision, we could allow for that as well. So if the applicant decided at a later time to do that, um, we could encompass an approval with allowing for that. Is that, would that be possible? I think, don't we have to approve the sign that's before us because it, our approval has to be specific to, you know, it has to be specific as to. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm sure you're right about that, David. And okay, so I, think I take it back. That, yeah, I'm not sure that <laughs> okay. would work. Okay, I was um, just trying to figure out some way of allowing it, but that's fine, yeah. you're right. Yeah. Um, any other questions from board members? No. I'm, I'm no, no. satisfied with Nathan's presentation and the applicant's uh, information that we have. And then Nathan, I was trying to understand in the staff memo, the recommendation, staff condition recommendation, surface area of the front wall should be 12.45 feet, square feet or smaller. There shall be only one front sign. So that those, that, those are the conditions that the staff is recommending? Yes, 12.45 um, is 10% of the facade as presented and as measured and presented by the applicant. So the applicant's uh, application said the facade is 124.5 uh, 124 square feet. So it's simply 10%. And uh, I said there shall be, I mean, the you know, typically, so in previous cases, the applicant had a um, couple different shapes and logos on the front, which could be interpreted to mean multiple signs on the front. So uh, to stay with the typical requirement, um, you know, that that was reason for the recommendation to have one mm -hmm. one shape. I mean, it can be composed of multiple text and logos, but they need to be grouped together to form like a one un continuous sign. It can't be like one sign on, you know, if you don't want it to be defined as interpreted as multiple sign, you can have like a one big sign on left side and one separate sign on the right side. That was yeah. the rationale. But the but three five zero seven point two M two that you cited says the board needs to specify quote in the permit the exact sign permitted the sign and location of the sign or signs and if applicable other restrictions so aren't we allowing the sign in the form that's been presented in the application I mean we can still say no more than twelve point four five square feet and no with and only one sign but. Don't we also have to say we're approving the sign, the exact sign as proposed in the application? So I discussed this with my director and um, her explanation was that um, changing the content, uh, once you grant the applicant the special permit with these conditions, the area, changing the content and even the, you know, the width and height, the dimension of the sign will be uh, allowed by right, you know, typical sign application. So um, it is my understanding that we, we can approve in a way to just specify the um, dimensions required without specifying that it needs to be this exact sign presented as long as it's within the, within the required dimension. Hmm. Hmm. It's interesting. So then, it says in, in the permit, we have to specify the exact sign permitted 
and the size and location of the assignment. I'm, I'm, go ahead, um, was Elizabeth. I, I cut some. Uh, yeah, I might have been. I might have been the one bumping in there. Um, Sorry. That Sorry. Uh, the applicant submitted two sign designs. One was the first choice. One was the second choice. And I, I would like to think that if either of their choices fell within the size parameters, they would have liberty to choose well, which of those two designs they could move forward with. Right. And I think, yeah, I, I, I was trying to bump in before, but then after the last thing you said, David, it made me just stop and think for a second. But I also would like to be able to grant permission up to the size that they're allowed. Um, and I mean, I can't imagine that, and maybe Erica, you can address this, but I can't imagine that if you're allowed a little bit more room than you actually asked for, that the design is going to change significantly or you're going to do something to the sign that would be objectionable. I mean, pizza's pizza, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, I guess I just, I also would like Maureen prefer to give it an outside parameter of size. Um, okay. But just, I understand your concern, David, and I, and I agree that this is what's being presented to us. And so, I mean, maybe what we could do is approve yeah, Nathan. Yeah, so I understand now David's concern. Yeah, I think I uh, sort of misspoke. So, I mean, what I'm trying to, what I was trying to explain is, you know, so yes, looking at the ordinance, you, you, you know, the special permit for this exact sign uh, proposed, but then um, the typical way the city interpretate this is later on, if the applicant wishes to, um, update the sign content while staying within the area, it would be a by right uh, modification. And the board can specify so that it doesn't require another special permit application like this one. But yes, um, we, we to be safe and to be in, um, in harmony with the ordinance, you do want to um, approve this exact sign. And Maureen, about the second sign option, I mean, I discussed it with the applicants and the sign maker and also with the director. The typical um, recommendation is the applicant needs to pick one particular sign and present it to the board. And I have asked and Erica has picked this one as the one main one they want to present. And the other thing is uh, the second option is well above 10%. Uh, I forgot the exact demand percentage, but oh. uh, the one presented currently as the main one that just says Pinocchio Pizza, it's within 10% of the facade. The other one is well above the 10%. So All we right, need well focus on the first choice sign, the so-called okay, first choice. Thank you. Yeah. Got it. Which apparently yeah. is the, Erica, that is your first choice. That's why it's Yeah, called. that was the first one, yeah. Okay, good. So I think I think we do have to specify that we're approving the so-called first choice design. The other one is maybe apparently too big too. So, okay. All right, uh, that sounds good. Should we close the public hearing? Sure, should we have a motion? Is that a motion? Sure. We we'll just want to note that there's nobody else in the oh, yes. public yeah. room. We yeah. give the public an opportunity to comment and we note for the record that there are no other members of the public present to comment. And there are no other comments, Nathan, any from anywhere else, DPW, anything? No, but well, um, you know, so like other signs, the applicant also needs to apply for a um, blocking and awning permit. I communicated that with the applicant earlier, but reminding the applicant again, and that doesn't require a hearing. It's a standard application. And I have also, communicate with DPW about this hearing and, you know, that the need for the applicant to communicate with DPW about getting the awning and blocking permit. I haven't heard any response from them. Okay. And, you have, and there, you've received no, uh, Nathan, no other comments from the public or emails or letters or correspondence or phone calls about this application. Is that oh, correct? thank you. Yeah. Zero, <laughs> zero comments, no emails, no phone calls, nothing. Zero good. comments. Okay, good. Okay. okay, that was my motion then to close the public hearing. Unless, Erica, is there anything else you wanted to add? No, there's nothing else to add. Okay. Thank you. Hmm. Okay, motion okay. to close public hearing. A sec, do we have okay. a sec? Okay, and then we need a roll call vote on closing. Yes, uh, David? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Maureen? Yes. 
Okay, and now maybe we can have a motion on uh, the application for the special permit. I don't have it up in front of me, Maureen. Do you? Could you make the motion? Oh, I don't know if I do either. Okay, well, let me go back and I can read it. Have in front of me. Well, you then... it and you can just adopt what I'm okay, saying. Okay, go for I it, it, David. I, I could so, find uh, it. In so I, I assume it would be a motion to grant the special permit by uh, requested by Erica Saravia to install awning signs where the total area of all surface signs, well, I just, just at 122 Main Street. Um, and um, just find that language. Um, uh, subject to the conditions that the surface area of the front wall or awning sign shall be 12.45 square feet or smaller, comma, there shall be only one front sign, comma, and and the, the, the exact sign we're approving would be so-called choice number one, the one that just says, as yeah. submitted, that just says Pinocchio pizza on it. And So I am happy to make that motion. Is it fine, Nathan, for you to just... Uh, capture that wording for yes. me to make that motion thank yeah, you yeah because you um you mostly read from the condition and one right. thing just for record i want to make sure um and um so my director and i some disagreement she didn't think it was necessary for the board to state it but just for safety do you want to state that um later modifications of the sign um staying within the condition does not require a special permit can you explain that a little bit more? So the way ordinance, the special permit ordinance 7.2 M3 uh, is written, it says any change in set signs requires a new or revised special permit unless the special permit specifies what types of changes are allowed. Um, tradition has been that it's kind of implied in different decisions in the past. Um, but I think I have some 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 thoughts whether you know some thoughts about maybe the board needs to specify explicitly state that just to be safe. And the board, of course, can disagree if it's used to these types of approvals. Uh, and, and you said uh, Carolyn Mish, what was her position on this point? Her position was that the building and planning department always interprets those types of changes while staying within the condition to be allowed by right. So I actually, in my earlier draft of the recommendation report, I didn't, I, I actually said, um, I specifically said any, um, any modification while staying within the condition does not require another new special permit. And I um, think there were some disagreements about whether that condition is necessary or not. Hmm. It, it, yeah if it's by right then do we why do we have to say yeah that? yeah yeah. it would seem to me that any changes unless they go beyond like exceed existing sort of what we've allowed in this permit would be permissible mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm. I guess I'm not. Um, like this is a new one to me. Yes, if the board is you know comfortable with the conditions as it is, and that was, that's also in line with the um, much more senior staff. So, um, <laughs> just wanted to bring it up. But I yeah, I appreciate it. I yeah. think I'm comfortable as with as it is as as we've yeah. presented. Yeah, me too. Okay. So, so is that your motion then, Maureen? Yes, it is. Thank you. Um, I I will second it. Okay. Sorry, David. Okay. okay. By roll, by roll call, David. Yes. yes, in favor. Elizabeth. Yes. And Maureen. Yes. Okay, that's unanimous. Um, I you know I meant to say for the record that uh, I think I already did that in in that you know we that uh, I I feel that the uh, this satisfies the standard required, and that is the a determination that the larger size would not detract from the character of the neighborhood. But I think I already stated it. So maybe we'll just make sure that's in the minutes. Um, okay. Thank you. I appreciate your keeping us to the actual standards, David. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. So, so, uh, uh, so you're all set. Um, 
uh, Erica. Um, and uh, uh, I think we just now, oh, we had some, so we have a little bit more. Business. Yeah, so Erica just needs to follow up with Nathan about the oh, DPW, okay. right? Yeah. yeah, and also state law, Erica requires, uh, so once I, I need to write the written decision um, so I can get to the Monday since five days are holiday. Once I write it and file it, state law requires you to wait for 20 days from appeal. It's very rare and it's not going to happen most likely, but it's a state law. So after 20 days of the appeal, you can get a certified copy from the city clerk and then file it with the registry of deeds. So that'll be your official of special permit registered. So there are a couple more steps in addition to DPW, but I'm happy to work with you on that after um, after the hearing. Okay, okay. Yeah. So. Okay, all set. Good Thank luck. You. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Eric. You. Thank you very much. Um, the oh, we had we had one uh, one set of minutes, I think. Yeah. Um, oh, and yeah. In the meantime, Eric, um, the applicant's free to go, right, David? Yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I'm sorry. Uh, yes. So yeah, thank you, Erica. We got a couple other things, but uh, you're we are welcome to leave or stay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Bye, bye bye. 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 Thank you. Um. Nathan, I have a question that it's a little late, but it doesn't really matter, I don't think. Obviously, the downtown business, the historic business district doesn't have a say on these awnings. They, they, they must only address changes to the facades of buildings in downtown Northampton. Oh, that's my understanding, but I need to check with that. Yeah, I think because it's a, it's an awning that's sort of a attachment, but not a permanent part of the building. I don't right. think the Central Business Architecture um, Committee requirement trigger, right. but definitely I need to clarify that with the Carolyn. Yeah, because that would apply to the other. Well, actually, we didn't approve the other awning because they reduced the size of it. But it occurred to me, does the Central Business Architecture Commission is... Is their approval required? I'm assuming not, but I was just wondering. It doesn't really affect us either way, but it affects the could affect the applicant. Right, right. That's actually. Mm. Uh, thank you for bringing it up. That's a one sure. detail I need to really work on. And so we had some minutes. Yeah, um, yeah. There's minutes from a, the meeting I was not at, um, but um, yeah. I had one comment on these. Actually, Maureen is usually our eagle eyes catching. <laughs> Maureen, did you have any comments? This is the minutes from 1012. Correct. Did you have a chance to take a look? I did look. I uh, did a quick drive through and I didn't see anything. Okay, thanks. Um, I, the one thought I had, and tell me if it's not appropriate, <laughs> is this, I, I'm not crazy about the sentence Bloomberg said that the significance of minutes are greater for ones with risks of appeals. That was supposed to be an editorial <laughs> comment. Um, I guess there's no great harm in having it. In I, no, I agree. I think we might want to. We might want to. Actually, yeah. I, 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 I would say I did notice that and I appreciated it was there. And I um, always feel feel like I wish there was opportunity for us to, us to have that type of conversation. Uh, but it's really hard to have that kind of conversation, yeah. you know, off, you know, out of school. Right. So I appreciated it was there, but is it legitimately like appropriate in the minutes? I don't know. Uh, but then um, if we just, remove that because it's not necessarily part of the minutes. Would we also remove the next sentence that was that that's about the next part that's about recordings? Uh, let me take a look. Um, yeah. Well, you're right. The, con the, the continue the next couple. I of mean, it's, a, it's just more of a conversation we had, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, uh, which um, I think, you know, I'm not uncomfortable with any of that being part of our minutes, honestly, but, but. Well, I, I'd leave that one up to David. I, I, I kind of agree with David that it's kind of a, if I had said that and it showed up, I, I might, I might be squirming a little bit. So I, I'd really be happy to take it out, but I, I get your point, Maureen. And I think it's, yeah, we can have this conversation sometime separately if we had put it on the agenda. Right. Um, I can just say something like, 
the board reviewed September 28 minutes and thought it was appropriate. Something like that. Just take out yeah. all that. Yeah, yeah, why don't we do that? I mean, we do have discretion in what our minutes right. say. They don't have to be, right. you know, encyclopedic. Um, but, but um, yeah, maybe we could do something like that. Um, you know, there was a, you know, there was a discussion of the minutes and the relation of the minutes versus the recordings of the hearings and the minutes were approved. Oh, well, I guess we have it in the next one. The minutes do we, if we're, if we're not approving today or we're approving with a change, do we really need to justify why we make the change or can we just take it out? Yeah, I don't think we have to justify why we make the change. That's why we review the minutes. Uh, right. Why, um, well, I'll just say I appreciated you you mentioning that, David. I mean, I learned from you all. Right. Thank you. But but it's it was really intended to be an editorial aside. <laughs> yes. yes. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I think I I should and have that, a better discretion. Well, no. I mean, you're. you're no, all, I'm you know, glad you put it in there, Nathan. Not, you know, mm -hmm. in the, the the underlying principle is minutes should be thorough and complete, and we don't. None of us would disagree with that. And it, back in the day, we just to say we would just say, "Don't put that in the minutes." But I don't think we're supposed to do that either. So <laughs> that's what I remember when we used to do that. don't put that in the minutes. Yeah. Uh, uh, at least other you know non-public boards that I've been on. So why don't I make a motion to approve the minutes without that sentence and the next one? No, I actually would. I would. I think the next section, the whole recordings. Uh, is so different that okay. I might just keep it in as is, unless either of you feel differently. No. Yeah, I think there's no no harm in in just removing that one sentence. Okay. Right. I mean, I think keeping the rest of it, you know, I, we've seen in uh, just maybe I'm only thinking of one instance where a. Um, an appellant was saying that they couldn't, that they were looking back at recordings to find some, you know, history of some story. And I think it's helpful for us to have in our records that, you know, the role, the recordings are not the legal document. The minutes are the legal document. Right. Right. Yeah. I I can just take because out the, the recordings yeah. are not hosted by the city, which Nathan was really good to, you know, articulate here. Right. So I think we can just delete that one sentence. Yeah, I, I just that. I deleted that one that. sentence where it says um, yeah. Bloomberg says so and so. I just deleted that one single sentence. And I mean, you know, it is not you know, truly pertinent to the matter. So it's more editorial comment, like David said. So I think there is a well justified reason to uh, remove it. So right. that one sentence has been removed, everything else has been kept. Right, I mean, chit chat happens in meetings and you right. don't have to write down all the chit chat, if it, especially right. when it bears no direct relation to, this had to do with reviewing minutes, not an application that was before us. Right, Okay. It, so exactly. All right, so move to approve the minutes as I I don't want to say amended, but has changed. Has changed with deletion of that sentence. Yeah. Yeah. Second. Or can we can we just move to approve baldly and have that taken out because otherwise it's kind of flagged and that's kind of weird too. Uh, I mean, um, about um, Elizabeth uh, Silver moved to approve the approve the mo uh, approve the minutes with some edits. Yeah, right. with the edit that was discussed or something. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's okay. Um, and then second. Okay. Yes. Second. Okay. By by roll call, uh, David. Oh, yes. Yep. So, okay. I, I almost said the Bloomberg. So, so David, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, uh, Elizabeth. Yes. And um, um, Maureen. Yes. Okay. okay. And uh, Hamlin too. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I respond to a lot of names. And um, we have a, 
next meeting, I think December 14th, is that the other? Yes, meeting? yep, that's the next one. There's no, um, there'll be no meeting until then. And that's um, the, that's the um, appeal of the uh, building commission decision to yeah. demolish Riverbank. Um, oh my God. <laughs> the 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 attorney has got the um the attorney has got the certified copy of the special permit uh some time back um I haven't had any updates about it since then and I am not aware of any order of conditions application that has come in so um yeah there will be when we start getting closer we'll get okay. stuff in more stuff no doubt. Well, I'm available on December 14th. I am two. That's the main. I am three. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so all three of you. I drove by there the other day. I'm not going to say any more, but I think it's I worth it. I do that. occasionally. I have a friend in the neighborhood, so we take a walk down that road. Yep. I think it's a good idea to do that. Yeah, it looks like he did. Rec I'm looking in the land records. Well, I guess we shouldn't do that during this year. Well, no, I think just knowing whether or not the transfer went through is that I'm not saying that I'm oh, not okay okay Nathan I will I will say I really appreciate well so much about what you're doing but also that you um took photographs of this you know tonight's um hearing those awnings because I always try to go for a site visit but your photo sometimes I can't or I just haven't pulled it off and those photographs are really helpful so thank you for that and everything you're doing Thank you. Thank you very much. I second that. Thank so, you. Um, so I guess just motion to adjourn then, right? Sure, I'll move to adjourn. Okay. I'll second. Okay. All right, by roll call, David? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Maureen? Yes. Okay. Good to Thank see you, you all.